All right, thanks a lot, Rich. Now, I'm here with Gabriel Nassif, Pro Tour Kyoto champion. He was sitting third in the chain of the players we're going to be talking to. And uh, let's get a look at the draft. What were you thinking about coming into the draft? What Did you have any preferences? No, or you just really. open? Yeah, just try and pick the best card. Try to pick a card that keeps me somewhat open. like So maybe a red or black removal or something that's not too like committing. Okay, so let's, let's look at your pack. Your pack was actually not very exciting. You didn't have nope. any kind of bomb cards. What, what are you thinking about here? Not much, just, I know I had Patrick to my right, and I know he used to love like red black decks, but with the new set, he's like more open. So maybe like before World Wake, I might have forced, try and force like, maybe I would have taken Hookmaster, but no. Oh. Uh, I'm just walking on the court, okay. I'm, um, so yeah, Torchlinger seemed like a pretty Tor easy pick. Torchlinger, it's really, you know, the only kind of strong red card, right? <laughs> yeah. Bushwhacker's kind of a late red pick. Yeah, like Hookmaster is okay. Like the black guy's good, but right. yeah, it's pretty clear first pick. Okay, and so let's, uh, let's take a look at your next pick. And so, again, another pack. Uh, not terribly strong. Uh, did you think at all about Grazing Gladeheart there? Not really, like... As I said, I wanted to stay, try to stay open for a couple more picks as long as I could. And I think, like, Blazing Torch might actually be the best card anyways. But, right. and, uh, and it like, has Wacom no turns good, Blade Heart's good, like, yeah, but it, like, I can stay in, like, red and see what, no, see what no happens. No color commitments. Yeah. So are you, are you thinking anything at this point about maybe what Chapin's drafting? Are you no. seeing anything here? No, I mean, I think he took a, I think he took a common. I noticed he took a common out of the first pack, so who knows. Okay, well, let's take a look at pack three. And uh, he took Magma Rift here, which seems like a, a pretty yeah. high place to pick Magma I Rift. I guess I kind of overvalue Magma Rift, but I wanted to stay in red, and I kind of like to have one, and there's only two packs of uh, the Zendikar now. And so. just because it can deal five, and you can deal with some really big yeah. monsters? Yes, usually with red, you only have, like, small guys two damage spells and so it's nice to have like magma rift or two in your deck like scorpion's good but seems dumb to like there's not a card good enough or a signal strong enough for me to like move out of red just yet so yeah okay. pretty i didn't really think twice about it okay and then uh finally let's take a look at pick four and you take a uh, highland berserker uh, are you thinking all about merfolk sea stalkers that yeah. seems like that might be a signal there yeah yeah i thought it was a signal and i like that was my toughest pick in the draft. I don't know if it's right because Sea Stalker is like first pick caliber, you know, especially blue is pretty good in World Wake. So, so might have been a miss pick actually, but I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I wanted to keep cutting a red to make sure like, so stand like blue. I right. So the, you, you've passed other, other than what, a Goblin Bushwhacker and maybe a Seismic Shatter, you've yeah. passed no meaningful red cards at all. Yeah, I think if it was another color, like, I'd pick Sea Stalker, but you want to be mono red for Spire Barrage and Claws of Valakut, so that's why I start to, to red there okay. to max, then, try and maximize it. And then how did, your, how did your deck pan out? Really good. I just kept getting decent red picks in the first draft. Late, late, late in the first pack, I got, like, a green card, a blue card, a black card, a couple decent black cards, so I was like, maybe I'll stay open. Then I first picked a Punishing Fire in the second pack and got past the second Punishing Fire. Was a, kind of, I, I managed to lap a Valakut, so yeah, it was pretty straightforward from there yeah. on. Looks, it looks like a very solid mono red deck. Yeah. But none of the cards, the third pack wasn't, uh, you didn't see Claws of Valakut. Or, or Searing Blaze. Or Searing Blaze, cards you were really looking for. Yeah, but still got decent tables, so. Still got a very solid yeah. deck. Okay, there you have it. We're gonna move on down the table and we're gonna take a look at Dennis Stone's picks next. Let's see how Belgium's Dennis Stone handled his picks and the fourth seat around the table. So Dennis, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about this first pick, pack here that you well, were opening up. There are, there are some good cards in the pack, like the Mosquito or the Sanctifiers or Pitfall Trap and these two. Right, you, you seem to be debating yeah. between Burst Lightning and Hellcat yeah, Charger. They right are definitely you. the best two cards in the deck. But like the burst lightning is really good, but it doesn't win you games that often. The charger usually wins you the game. It's a bomb, so I picked that one. And then, uh, did you have any concerns at all about passing red cards after taking a red card, or? Yeah, I, I definitely thought the guy on my left would pick the burst lightning because it's, it's still the best card left in the pack. But he's the guy on my left, so I don't really mind him being in my colors. Okay. Yeah. So let's take a look at the next pack. 
and uh, tell us what you're thinking about in this pack. Well, this pack is not that good. There are only two, uh, three good cards, like the Hookmaster, the Charge, and the, the, the Ally. Sword. But I took the Hookmaster because I thought it was the better card. Yeah. And do you like red-white in this format? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, going on now, uh, you've picked a red card. You've picked a white card. Yeah. You get to pack three. You're looking at this. I mean, are you looking at Cliff Threader yeah. at all? Are you? What are you thinking? I thought about the Cliff Threader. I also thought about the Grazing Great Heart. Grazing Great Heart. That's which yeah. is kind of late for for that card to be going around the table yeah. already. But the Walking Turn is just better, I think. Now, so do you do you I, feel like Blue has gotten a lot better in the third pack with the addition of World Wake? What? Do you feel like Blue has gotten a lot better with the addition of World Wake in the third uh, pack? Well. Yeah, I get. Mm, not really. It's the same. I think. Same. You just like blue. Yeah. Okay. I I draft blue a lot actually. Okay. Uh, also the welcome turn. Uh, I, uh, I I see there's not much red, so I'm probably not gonna play red, and I that's why I picked another color. So. So at this point, you feel like red is maybe being cut off yeah. from you. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, finally, I want, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I, I want to have like several several colors so I could still change my drafts. Okay, so you wanted to be flexible. Yeah. Okay, and then let's look at pick four. And uh, yeah, there's there's not a red card to be found here. Yeah. There's, I, I, see you, I, I see there's still a green card. That's pretty good, the vines. Also, the grasp is pretty good, but the white card is definitely Did better. Did you give any thought at all to the giant scorpion? That seems kind of late for that card to be going yeah, around. Yeah, but I didn't see many good black cards already, so the guy on my right might be black. Uh, I the only good card I've seen is the ally, the tree tree. Right. So I didn't pick it. Okay, and then so uh, you pick up core sanctifiers here. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about how the rest of the draft plays out. You you end up locking into white blue. Uh, I drafted a lot of white cards, but uh, I'm at the end I put them in my sideboard because I had three colors. Draft didn't really went that good. I had too many white cards. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what, what what were your two colors? Uh, blue and green. Okay, okay. So now you can look at Dennis's deck and all the decks we've talked about uh, in the draft viewer. You can sit yourself down in any seat, see what picks they made, see what you might have done, maybe see what you can learn from these guys. Uh, this is Brian David Marshall for Dennis Stone, signing off from the Tournament Center.